Hello, hello, I'm here with just a quick makeup demo as well as review slash comparison of the brush that I said was possibly a dupe for the Koyudo BP-022. So for a little bit of background, the Koyudo BP-022 is this flat top squirrel brush and it's a rather unique shape that you don't find in squirrel very often. And this BP series was mostly discontinued. The BP-022, this one was one of the casualties. Some of the BP brushes are still being manufactured, but this one is gone. And this was my week three fluffy food day pick for a brush I changed my mind about. Um, when I changed my mind about it was like, I was thinking it can't be that good. And it really is super good. It gives such a nice airbrushed finish to the blush and is super, super nice because it applies and it blends effortlessly. So ever since that one got discontinued, people have been asking what's a good dupe for it. And I have two that I'm going to discuss in this video. And But first I'm going to apply my makeup so then I can apply blush with those brushes. So just going in with my usual foundation palette, I'm going to stick to, I guess, the theme of the video today and use a flat top foundation brush to apply, or rather, blend my foundation. And then this is a cream foundation for those of you who are new here. This little brush I have was some free gift of purchase lip brush. It just happens to fit in this palette I have here. It goes in a tray. I just scoop out some foundation, spread it all around so I don't have to use my fingers and possibly touch some other things contaminate it and create a mess. I'm going to spread it all around first and then use my foundation brush to blend it out. So I'm not going to be doing a full-fledged demo like I usually do with eyeshadow and the rest. It's just to apply a base and then apply or use the BP-022 and the other brush to apply blush on top of it to show you how they compare and how they look. I'm realizing I'm gonna to have to do something with my lighting in this new setup. It's very, very cold. So I'm gonna to have to get some lights and bulbs to kind of color adjust everything. And I don't think the green wall paint is helping. It's kind of everything blended in. Oh, that's a bit pale too. Spent some sun in the, spent some time in the sun this weekend. So, oopsies. I'm gonna go in, cover up the spots a little bit and then it's on to blush up a little bit more. And then I'm just going to use that foundation brush again and just pat over them to blend. So this is just a straight up and down motion. And then I featured this brush in another video before. This is the Bunshindo Kalinsky Contour brush. Uh, clearly I'm not using it for contour. Okay, there we go. I'm going to apply a quick layer of powder to set everything. This way it allows the blush to go on more seamlessly. That way it doesn't sort of stick. I'm just using a Hakuhodo big powder brush. Clearly I've used this one before and I kind of just use it to buff everywhere. I think I'm gonna need a little bit of bronzer because this darkness is the fact that my foundation is too light is gonna bug me. Slightly better. I 
And then this is almost like a finishing brush, which is why I'm running it all over the place without fear that it's going to move my foundation and erase stuff underneath. Just applying it everywhere. Still felt a little sticky up here, so I'm going to run a brush over the area until all the residual powder kind of powders down and mattifies the area. Okay. There we go. Now for the main meat and potatoes, let's apply the BP022 on this side. I'm going to use a Clinique cheek pop because one of the problems that Squirrel has is it's too soft, too flexible, and doesn't pick up pigment well if the brush is structured incorrectly. Because this brush is pretty densely packed, the squirrel hairs have no problem picking up pigment. And one of the toughest formulas I know of is this uh, cheek pop formula from Clinique. So picked up with just a little bit of a swirl. You can see the pigment on there. And then we're gonna just apply this. You can see how it goes on so effortlessly. I'm just gonna buff the edges a little bit to blend. There you go. And that's the blush applied. This is a very sheer layer of blush. I can build it up more if I want to. I'm actually gonna go over with another color, that pink color for highlight just on the top half. I'm kind of using it on a downward angle like this. And then buff a little bit of that light pinky highlighter shade into the apples of the cheeks. So that's the blush applied on the side with the Koyudo BP022. Now let's compare it to the Chukuhodo RP5. This is the RRP5, RR for the red handle, just one R for the black handle. I prefer the red handle because it has this little bit of a metallic iridescence and it's really pretty in real life. So first things first, you can see that it's a little bit smaller and you can't feel it through a screen, but the RRP5 doesn't have this rounded edge and you can kind of feel it. But once you go on the face, you can really definitely feel it. And yeah, because this one's shorter, it also feels a little denser and a little firmer than the um, than the BP02. So you can see there's not as much flex. This one you can see the fan out. This one less so, and that's simply a structural thing. It's not pokey. It's just not as soft in the firm sense. So let's go in again with this same one swirl blush. There we go. I'm going to apply it this way. So I apply it going linearly first, and then I blend the edges. Like so. And then I'm going to go into that pink color again, and then use it to highlight. Okay, so as you can see, applying blush with both was pretty effortless. You'll notice that the BP022 side is slightly darker or slightly more pigmented than the RP5 side, and that's because of the size difference. You have more surface area to pick up more pigment out of the pan with one swirl versus with this brush, you're going to have to go back into the pan a couple more times simply because the brush is smaller and will pick up less. Not a huge deal breaker, but if you're a efficiency person, then this brush might be slightly less efficient and preferable to you. So if I just go into the pan another time, pick up another one, there's no danger of applying too much pigment with either brush. This one just takes a little longer and they both blend beautifully. Like I'm not even looking at the mirror right now. I'm just looking at the camera and I can kind of do it by feel. As long as you blend the edges, it looks beautiful. So is the RP5 a straight dupe for the BP002? 
or BPO22. No, but functionally, it works just fine. If you're not able to get your hands on a BPO22, definitely look into the RP5. And I get a lot of questions about whether or not the FO2 is a dupe for the BPO22. E yes and no. So they're about the same size. You can use it to apply blush. You can use it to apply highlighter the same way. But being that this is made of fox hair, it feels a lot more firm. So the fox hair feels almost like the BPO22 if it was made of a combination of goat hair and squirrel hair. It does the same thing, but with the FO2, there is the possibility you are going to over apply. However, if you just clean the brush off, get most of the pigment off and then go in with a semi-clean brush to blend, you'll still be able to take down, erase the extra pigment and end up with a natural looking finish and flush. So this is not an exact dupe and this is even less of a dupe for the BP022. Where this brush is great is for applying foundation. I have several videos on it, one of them on Instagram, one of them on YouTube of using this brush to apply foundation and it's just the most creamy, silky, uh, finish. It's incredible. That's for cream and liquid foundation as well as for powder foundation from what I told I haven't used this powder foundation yet. These two are only for powder blush but wow they really do powder blush really really well. So that's the video. I hope you guys found this helpful and if you guys are interested in picking up the RP5 there's a CD Japan coupon for off 6,000 yen for $3, approximately $3 off 60. And I think it's $10 off 100 or something like that. That's active until the end of July. So now would be a good time to pick it up. Um, this brush is about the equivalent of $74. This brush is about the equivalent of $100, depending on the exchange rate. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.